Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to my Abby Events. Welcome to our webinar. And we apologize for uh, being late, but there are some things that we cannot um, stop. So we apologize, but we are here and we are ready to uh, discuss our very important topic tonight. And as you can see, Dr. Natalia Schlapp is back with us. I'm very happy to have you back. It's been, I think, more or less two years that since you've been our uh, speaker guest. So I'm really, really excited to have you back as our guest. And of course, I hope you are having a crazy but a good day how are you thank you so much for uh, for introduction thank you for for having me back uh, at IVF Fencers uh, yeah indeed it's a crazy day uh, we had some issues uh, with lawyers that we have to solve in Valencia so you know I'm, I'm, ju I'm just arriving from Valencia now uh, I'll be glad to talk to you about the reasons of miscarriages um, that uh, we are facing here in um, UR Vistermosa. Um, the clinic uh, is inside of a big hospital, but is on the uh, lower floor. So patients who are coming to us uh, are having a uh, whole privacy. And uh, we are uh, glad uh, to be a clinic of seven um, gynecologists subspecialized in reproductive medicine. We are a clinic um, with a very uh, clear um, setup. Um, there are three um, colleagues uh, in the, before the retirement, which are like our father's teachers, uh, my generation, if you post in there, uh, early middle 40s uh, and of course we are a teaching hospital we have a master of productive medicine so we are teaching younger colleagues um, I'll be glad to discuss with you how uh, we are solving the miscarriage issues uh, in this team of professionals uh, that we will be glad to welcome you in our clinic Thank you so much indeed for that introduction it's great to have you for sure before we start with our topic uh, just let me remind everyone that uh, first uh, we will have a presentation and uh, afterwards there will be time for your questions so remember you can type those in the chat section this is being recorded as well so of course uh, you will be able to have uh, to to re-watch this and also before uh, we go ahead i also want to add and mention that european fertility society is probably supported by Finomatch. i know that vista armosa is also using this uh, wonderful uh, technology so uh, thanks for your support and also as always i want to remind everyone that we are still looking for volunteers so if you wish to help us with some of uh, transcriptions actually right now uh, please get in touch with me my name is Caroline and uh, you can you can find my email of course after the webinar you will be able to receive it so uh, if you wish to help us just get in touch with us of course um, and that is it from me and I think now it is time to go ahead with our presentation uh, Dr. Natalia um, Ready to start? Yep, let's go for Brilliant. it. Brilliant, let's go <laughs> then. Okay, um, the, the, the solutions for, for miscarriages. Um, as we can imagine, um, the UR uh, Vista Hermosa is a clinic specialized uh, in simple cases, but uh, also we are not afraid of complicated cases. Um, me, myself, I worked 20 years in in gynecology, um, so uh, miscarriages, repeated miscarriages are defined than more than three um, unsuccessful um, transfers in uh, reproductive medicine. So uh, basically, if you have um, three uh, transfers that ended with negative pregnancy test or with miscarriage, you are uh, defined as a repeated uh, miscarriage patient. Um, when um, we see uh, patients with uh, repeated miscarriages, we have to be aware that patients' age um, has the most important role uh, in the whole situation. The female age uh, means the older we are getting, the lower uh, genetic quality of uh, eggs and embryos we are generating. So uh, you can see that when we are older than 35 years old, the pregnancy rate uh, without genetic testing of, of embryos is just 18%. When we select embryos genetically, uh, the, the pregnancy rates are more than 
if we see that all embryos of patients are genetically uh, abnormal, then the only way we can help you is an egg donation. And then you see that your cumulative pregnancy rate after three transfers is more uh, than 90%. So uh, you are Vistermosa. Mm, has um, a treatment plan where we offer you um, three embryos and a five of development to have you in this um, pregnancy rate. So um, here you see uh, the age-dependent uh, pregnancy rate. Um, it was published in uh, 2012 where we see that if we have four or six embryos of egg donors or young uh, patients, young is defined under um, 35 years old, uh, then uh, we have more than 50% um, uh, pregnancy, uh, uh, the, the pregnancy rates are, are higher than, than because the number of, of genetically normal embryos is about 55-40%. When we uh, see patients at the age of 35, 37 years old, uh, about 40% uh, of embryos are good. At the age of 38, 40 years old, 37% of embryos are good. At the age of 41, 42 years old, 20% of embryos are good. At the age of 42 or more years old, just 10% of embryos are good. So basically, in uh, you are a uh, we... Uh, recommend genetical selection of embryos of patients older than 35 uh, to define uh, not only the good quality ones, but also uh, healthy ones without genetical uh, abnormalities. Um, so when we see the reasons of miscarriages, the most common reason uh, is the advanced maternal age and the genetical quality uh, uh, of embryos that is due to advanced maternal age, um, the older patients are getting the lower number of uh, good, healthy embryos they are generating. And if we do not select embryos genetically in patients of advanced maternal age, they uh, can have a B quality. They can attach to the uterus lining, but uh, quite often they're getting miscarried. So uh, the genetical quality of embryos, the poor genetical quality of embryos, which are not genetically selected, uh, in patients um, with advanced maternal age. This is the most common cause of, of miscarriages. Um, so um, when we design um, cycles uh, here in UR, uh, we still have patients that are coming and they believe in, in fresh uh, uh, transfers. They have uh, higher success rates. No, this is uh, not true. We have uh, higher success rates in frozen cycles. The clinic uh, is famous for good quality of cycles where we uh, de develop embryos to day five of development. Then um, we have to be aware that embryos on day three of development have just um, eight, 10 cells. Embryos on day five have 150, 200 cells. Uh, so this is the moment where natural selection takes place. And then um, when we have uh, 200 cells embryo, we take um, two, three cells out of each blastocyst uh, and um, test uh, those uh, cells genetically. And then um, we see that the number of euploid ones, the healthy ones, is age dependent. Sometimes out of five blastocysts when somebody's um, 25, 30 years old, we have four good ones at the age of 35, just two are good ones. And um, at the age of less than 35, uh, we have less uh, good embryos, um, might be only one. But this embryo, where it's so well uh, selected, it has uh, the pregnancy rate uh, more than 60%. So it's worth uh, to do it to avoid uh, the recurrent miscarriages. Um, uh, if we see that patients are not um, getting any genetically normal embryos, um, we offer an, an egg donation program uh, in the clinic. Uh, we are in the heart of Alicante in the city center. 
uh, where we see uh, international patients, but also in the other part of, uh, of the city, we have an office where we see uh, our egg donors. And the clinic database has more than a thousand active donors available for you. Uh, there are um, in the Phenomes database, they are also in um, our database um, uh, very well um, selected. Um, according to the Spanish law, donor, egg donor has to be under 35 years old, has to be healthy, means screened for infectious diseases. Uh, we screen donors uh, every six months for infectious diseases and also on the day of egg retrieval. Uh, in clinic, we have a policy that uh, none of the eggs are getting fertilized uh, if we do not have a result of a screening test for infectious diseases. Uh, donors are screened for uh, mental health uh, issues. We do not allow any patients that are drug dependent or have uh, issues with schizophrenia, depression, personality issues to be our donors, um, so it have to be our donors have to be young, under thirty five years old. Uh, they are also tested for genetical diseases uh, that they are not uh, carriers of cystic fibrosis. We have a special test that is testing for the most common genetical diseases in European population. So this is the step number one of donor choosing process for you: the availability of donors, the uh, anonymity and me myself as as uh, you know uh, I was trained in Berlin um, then uh, in Detroit Michigan in the US um, I had to relocate to Spain 10 years ago because of health issues and actually uh, Spanish colleagues Spanish reproductive medicine taught me how to perform fresh egg donation cycles um because uh, Spanish legislation allowed for anonymous egg donation uh, more than 30 years ago. So, of course, if you do uh, this kind of cycles, if you have this legislation, you are becoming the best in, in European Union. Um, and this is why a majority of patients are coming uh, to us um, uh, for this kind of treatments. You are, it's an international clinic. We have um, 15 uh, centers in um, in whole Spain. Uh, so um, the Alicante department is the specialized in uh, international European cases. Uh, the Barcelona clinic probably will grow into a center for um, uh, American Canadian patients um, because uh, the, the flight availability, uh, very good connections to Alicante airport and um the time if you perform uh donations since the since the 80s um you you have uh, learned your lesson you have learned from your mistakes and you are happy to treat your patients as best as you can in the second uh step of donor choosing process um the uh, patients are filling in uh, a paper sheet where uh, they have to describe themselves, how how tall are they, their color of uh, hair, skin, uh, color of eyes, uh, female and male uh, patient have to do it. Uh, we ask you to send your pictures the way you look like now and the way you looked like in your 20s. Uh, and with the support of Phenomatch, the computer shows us the, the shape of your eye, nose, mouth, uh, and shows us 20 best donors available uh, out of our database. Uh, especially for you. Uh, we are uh, a strong team working um, a clinic where a um, patient is usually followed up by the doctor, by patient coordinator, and uh, by um, by the, the donor uh, coordinator. We have a meeting uh, with our donor coordinator um, in the lab, and we um find uh, the best donor uh for you uh, what is important um that in the second step of donor choosing process you have to tell us what is important for you which characteristic of yours your donor shall have um patients um are not only sending their pictures but also 
uh, writing personal details. Some of them say, listen, for me, it's important. The uh, the way the my donor look like, um, I, you know, I work to gym, I work out every day, I go to gym every day. So she has to have, you know, the body of a model. <laughs> Um, some patients say no. We uh, we spend our lives uh, studying, doing degrees, so uh, we want a donor um, with uh, academical background. We um, uh, speak regularly with students. Uh, having the master in reproductive medicine in in this clinic, it allows us to go to the university, and we teach students about their fertility, about their um, contraception, <clears throat> about we recommend for young people social freezing before 35 years old if they do not have children. And through those lectures, we get a lot of um, uh, donors for our patients. So uh, getting for you an academical donor is not a problem. Um, also, um, the, the ethnical background of yours the donors are in five um, phenotypes. Phenotype one are donors with blue eyes. We have a huge Ukrainian uh, immigration now. Uh, me, myself, I can still speak fluent Polish and Russian. So the communication with uh, with Ukrainian donors with uh, light hair, like complexion, light eyes is not a problem. Um, we have donors with uh, phenotype two green eyes, phenotype three. Uh, girls with brown eyes, usually with Hispanic background, uh, phenotype four are girls from um, Asia, and phenotype five are girls from Africa. So basically, if we want to do our job correctly, we we have to have donors uh, for all those phenotypes. Um, the issues with African donors, there's no issues here. Uh, we differentiate patients from Nigeria or patients... Um, from Ethiopia or Congo, uh, we have donors available or mixed ethnicity donors or uh, pure African donors with these backgrounds available for you. Uh, so the final match is done by us, by the team of people. We, the people, um, find a perfect donor for you. Um, and uh, then we designed a medication plan. Uh, I'm very famous for medication plans that um, we want to start working with you as soon as possible. When you have a period, uh, you're giving a protocol to do something called a test cycle. Uh, usually it's uh, six milligrams of progenova and we see if this dose of hormones is well adjusted to your body or not. And if we repeat it in the transfer cycle or not. In the transfer cycle, you are having a period together with your donor you are synchronized with your donor and then um, your donor is putting injection to let your eggs grow for you and you take oral medication to let the uterus lining um, grow. Um, you know, we are setting up the time frame of eight, nine days where you are present in um, Alicante with your partner where we collect eggs of a donor, uh, fresh eggs of a donor for you. We fertilize them with uh, your partner's sperm. We wait for embryos to develop to day five. We transfer one embryo back to you and the rest is getting frozen. The clinic gives you a guarantee of at least 10, 12 eggs uh, in a cycle and at least three embryos on day five of development. Um, so, um, for patients with recurrent miscarriages, uh, which are coming to uh, our clinic, uh, and we find out that the reason why you are miscarrying is advanced maternal age, and all the embryos are genetically abnormal, this, the, the last step in reproductive medicine, which we can offer you, it's an egg donation, which uh, solves a majority of um, miscarriage issues. Um, we are uh, treating here patients with um, immunological issues, which could also be a reason of recurrent miscarriages. Um, me, myself, I was diagnosed uh, with autoimmune disease and the uh, University of Michigan in Ann Arbor saved my life. <laughs> so uh, I decided to write a PhD about immunology and, and early miscarriages. And um, the most um, common reasons why immunological miscarriages happen 
um, are autoimmune diseases like uh, lupus, like uh, antiphospholipid syndrome, uh, where our uh, white blood, blood cells are producing antibodies uh, against our platelets. Platelets are getting sticky, are, um, are developing blood clots, and this is the reason why the implantation does not occur and why you have miscarriages. And natural killers issues, of course, um, patients with high NK cells um, develop miscarriages um, more often than patients without uh, those issues, all natural killer issues. Uh, patients are treated with intralipid protocol uh, and prednisone um, cure polymorphism. Yeah, this is quite important when we uh, talk about uh, cure natural selection, especially when you failed a first egg donation uh, where the second donor is matched to you like uh, like a tissue, like HLA um, uh, typed kidney or liver. So uh, the compatibility of HLA-C is um, very um, important. We uh, match a donor to you uh, according to your care a receptor and uh, HLA of your partner. Uh, and of course, we offer you, if there are mismatches, we offer you a special protocol uh, to have as high pregnancy rates as possible. Uh, TH1, TH2 ratio, um, balance. Um, with patients with TH1, TH2 th th ratio, uh, Humira protocol, Prograf, Tacrolimus, these are the medication that we use uh, to... Um, to diminish the, the response of TH1 cells, uh, which uh, are embryotoxic, uh, and to favor TH2 balance uh, to uh, make um, your immunological system embryo-friendly. Um, so these are the most common immunological causes of miscarriages. Of course, we um, when we know that you have this kind of issue, we are uh, we are happy um, to to treat you with the protocol that I discussed. Um, age uh, factor, as uh, you know, we discussed, the is the most uh, most important uh, cause of of uh, miscarriages, uh, either solved by genetic embryo selection, or in IVF cycles or uh, if we see that everything is genetically abnormal, egg donation. Um, the problem that we face in Europe and the age factor is that women are getting pregnant later on in their lives. Uh, when um, I remember uh, my medical career in, in Germany, Berlin, uh, there, were nobody, there was nobody pregnant between 19 and 25, 26 years old who were we're studying uh, in order to become medical professionals. Uh, and as we can imagine, 60 years ago, um, in, in, the, in the 70s, uh, women were, a majority of women were pregnant in their 20s. And uh, in, uh, in the 90s um, or now, a majority of women are thinking about getting pregnant uh, in mid-30s. And this is the moment where the fertility drops down dramatically because of um, X uh, quality. So when when we have lectures for our students here in the University of Alicante and when we do the master classes, uh, we teach people that they have to have children when they are young, before 35. You cannot imagine how many of them are laughing me out when we when we talk about it. So at least uh, you freeze your eggs. Um, if you are planning to be a mom after 35. So um, the ovarian reserve, this is something very, very important that uh, the older we are getting, not only the X quality, but also X quantity drops down dramatically. So um, we usually calculate your ovarian reserve seeing your age, your AMA, your antimuller hormone, antral follicle count, uh, it's a transvaginal scan, uh, which doctors specialize in reproductive medicine uh, usually uh, see the ovaries in a different way than than the general gynecologist. <laughs> AMH is um, 
anti-malarian hormone. <clears throat> it's uh, a hormone that tells us how many eggs we are going to get. Um, when we see low AMH patients, low means under one, we usually uh, we usually uh, recommend embryo banking where we do two, three cycles where we generate um, a few embryos. Uh, the goal is at least six embryos and see which one of them are genetically um, normal. With our age, fertility drops down dramatically after 35. Uh, at the age of 42, uh, majority of eggs are genetically abnormal and you're a candidate for an egg donation. Um, it's not only the risk of ovarian syndrome, but also uh, but also uh, other complex uh, genetic abnormalities. So uh, the solutions for egg uh, quality uh, is controlled ovarian hyperstimulation is an uh, IVF cycle, egg retrieval, uh, developing of embryos to day five, and genetic selection of them. This is how the results look like. In the upper curve, we see embryogenetically normal, where all the chromosomes are uh, in its number um, presented in the correct way. Uh, in the lower curve, you see that chromosome number 18 is, is too much. Uh, so um, this kind of embryos with genetic abnormalities are not uh, trans transferred in your vispermosa. So uh, six blastocysts, this is our goal. If you have good AMH, uh, we can have it at once. If you have a low AMH, we have to do an embryo banking, but still don't give up. If you have two, three embryos out of first cycle, in three months, we repeat a cycle. I just had amazing girls from from Zurich, one of them 38 years old, we did one cycle, she had three embryos, um, then uh, three months later we did one cycle more, she had two embryos, five in total. She couldn't handle me anymore, she said, Natalia, I want the, the, the genetic testing of them, and she was lucky out of five embryos, two of them were genetically normal, okay? So um, don't give up if your AMH is lower than... than you would expect to just work hard and you know make things happen in your life. So, um, cycles with or without PGS, um, you know me having this um, strong American background, um, the country where you know people sue you um, for your mistakes. Majority of cycle that I perform are undergoing genetic testing. We can negotiate. Uh, mosaicism uh, embryos transferred yes or no we know that mosaic embryos in european union are, untra are transferred the patients are signing special consents to make it happen and uh, we know that embryos uh, are correcting um, their abnormalities in in mosaicism uh, so uh, i would transfer genetically normal and mosaic embryos uh, i wouldn't transfer genetically abnormal embryos so um the you are it's a clinic that uh, wants to know why you are miscarrying we are not uh, a clinic <clears throat> where we want to do one transfer after another uh because we are repeating the same mistake we want to know uh before we transfer again what is going on in your body to stop in implantation uh i like um cycles I like challenges. Uh, after so many years working in reproductive medicine, sometimes you have patients that have never had a positive pregnancy test uh, because they have never had a blastocyst in their life or uh, they have never had testing of their uterus lining done. Uh, we don't know if the, the lining is uh, receptive or not receptive. Um, the clinic, when we are talking about egg donation, we want to give you a guarantee of at least three embryos, three goals, with a very high success rate after three transfers, uh, more than 90% of patients have uh, children at home. Of, cor of course, um, female part is the most important one in uh, the miscarriages. Uh, we cannot underestimate the, the, the male role that is now defined as 25, 30% of all the cases. Um, all the patients on the day of first appointment get from us the sperm analysis, um the dna fragmentation um we have uh, andrologist that is working here with us so if we have to do testicular biopsies 
uh, we have a um, uh, urologist, andrologist specialized in this who is helping us out. So we are solving all the obstructive and productive um sperm uh, quality issues um, so don't hesitate uh, to contact us if you uh, are having this problem um so um, yeah the male factor has been underestimated we know that um, it's not only the quality of sperm defined as volume concentration motility and morphology that we have to look at but also the DNA fragmentation that is uh, done on the day of first appointment in in the clinic. Um, receptivity issues. This is something that um, causes the um, uh, too shallow um, receptivity, too, too shallow embryo uh, implantation uh, that is not put to the uterus lining on time um, causes uh, recurrent uh, implantation failure. So um, in UR, we are not waiting for three miscarriages or uh, for three unsuccessful transfers. We, uh, we after one transfer, basically in egg donation, I recommend either endometrial scratching or, or verifying your implantation window. Um, the implantation window now is combined with uh, immunological testing of your endometrium and um, and also with uh, infections uh, screening for infections like chlamydia uh, megaplasma uh, one of my friends lawyer friends um, she had uh, an egg donation cycle with me unsuccessful eventually we did the biopsy and it turned out that she's a carrier, chronic carrier of Escherichia coli. And after treating this, um, we were able to achieve the first time implantation in, in her life. So she was over, over the moon. Uh, so there is a moment in the receptivity in the window of implantation where we have the best implantation, the best receptivity. This is the moment where embryo has to, has to be put to the uterus lining. Majority of patients... Um, have five days implantation window. Um, there are a few that have six, seven days of progesterone. Um, we discussed immunology before. Uh, the cases, uh, so this is very important to, to talk to your patients. Uh, we had um, a patient who um, came to us for um, an egg donation in um the um, uh, first cycle um she had negative result in the second negative in the third uh she had a miscarriage uh in egg donation um of course um we performed all the immunological and the material study between transfer number one and transfer number two and uh what we found out that embryos that she miscarried uh, in the double uh, embryo transfer. One of them was genetically normal and the other one was um, with trisomy 13. So this was the reason of a miscarriage. This happens sometimes in egg donation cycles that even though embryos are uh, from a young donor, it could be, uh, some of them could be genetically abnormal. Uh, we performed the second egg donation cycle with genetic testing of embryos and she got pregnant uh, immediately. So these are uh, the most common genetic abnormalities that we faced due to advanced maternal age. Uh, we have to understand that donors, even though they are young, nobody's perfect. Uh, some of them also uh, have genetic um, abnormalities. So in the second case, uh, this is my favorite cycle. This is how I was trained in the US. 20, 25 eggs, um, no hyperstimulation triggered with agonist, um, the embryos developed um, to aid blastocyst. And uh, I think that uh, my marketing magicians didn't put the age of a patient. Um, it was a um, 35 years old patient out of eight blastocysts, six were genetically normal. Uh, the transfer was performed and the uh, a pregnancy test was negative. Um, 
before transferring the second time, we performed the uterus lining biopsy for the receptivity, and we saw that the the implantation window was displaced. That we had instead of 5.5 days progesterone intake, which is normal, the best receptivity at day seven, and then uh, the patient had um, healthy twins. Uh, sometimes if um, the first transfer doesn't work out, uh, I recommend always single embryo transfer patients want to go for, for, for double uh, in the second attempt. And when you correct immunology, when you correct receptivity, it quite often ends up in, in the twin uh, pregnancy. So uh, this is how we uh, can summarize the, the miscarriages. Uh, the most common cause is advanced maternal age and, and lack of genetic selection of your embryos. Um, uh, there are some clinics that do not perform it, that do not have um, personal trained or do not have a law of, of the country where you live in, uh, which allows for this. Uh, that's why we recommend you to, to work is that with us, uh, especially when you failed a couple of cycles in your country. Uh, the second reason is immunology, uh, uterus lining receptivity issues, um, male factor that we have to consider. In order to become our patient, uh, we are offering online uh, consultations. Uh, I'm flying back uh, the same way as I used to all around Europe. Once a month, it's London. And then a second patient meeting that we have where we see patients for free. Um, it's usually um, Deutschsprachigen Raum, Germany, uh, Switzerland, or the Netherlands, uh, where we uh, see patients with different issues. Um, uh, we usually do the medical uh, history form either online or at a patient meeting we perform a medication plan proposal for you and basically you are coming um, to you are for the treatment uh, only. Uh, the amazing uh, commercial team that we have is uh, doing a great follow-up with all the documents. Patients are getting their consent sent, their uh, phenotypes um, sent, uh, the the invoice proposal. So basically, when when you are arriving, you are uh, you are ready uh, for the transfer or for an and a collection. Um, the big UR family, as I say, are fifteen UR clinics uh, in uh, Spain, Alicante. It's an amazing clinic for uh, all uh, European flights because of a, of an airport that uh, that we have. Um, we have a team here uh, specialized in international patient care. We have uh, people who are uh, used to working online, sending you all the documents that you need uh, online uh, when you're arriving, your uh, transportation, your um, car, is uh, waiting there for you. You're, uh, you're, you're brought either to us directly or to your hotel that uh, everything is well taken care of. So the facilities we are, uh, the, the Vistermosa Clinic in the huge hospital when I first came here. Um, yeah, it felt a little bit like DMC, like Detroit, but the clinic is um, quiet. Uh, private in the in the lower level of, of this huge uh, hospital so you can feel here like uh, at home uh, the founder of you are uh, dr. Lopez Gales has more than 40 years experience in reproductive medicine I always say that I was blessed to to be able to join the family during COVID time, there were no uh, job for international doctors and I found home, friendship, support of colleagues in UR and we want to give it back to you. Uh, now in, in better times, we hope that COVID pandemic is over so you can um, come to us for um, a treatment or meet us uh, during our patient meetings uh, in London or in other European countries. Uh, so the clinic uh, is all in blue. 
um, this uh, this is the waiting area. Um, the, there are um, three offices, uh, the amazing IVF lab uh, that makes uh, all these eggs that we uh, get from our patient fertilized, develops a- amazing embryos under five of development. This is what Spanish legislation allows for, test them genetically to know if they are healthy or not. Uh, and in a uh, patient uh, with advanced maternal age performing genetic selection, we have uh, in, in the clinic um, senior embryologist who do it in, in the lab. We do not ask anybody outside. We are able to do it on our own. And um, if we uh, see that all the embryos uh, do not meet our expectations, that we go for a donation. Thank you so much. So much indeed. As always, you've been very thorough. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, it's great to have you for sure. Um, and now, of course, this is your favorite part, everyone. So if you have any questions, go ahead, type those in in the chat section. And I'm sure Dr. Star will be happy to help you out with uh, with any questions that you might have. Um, and of course, I'm just waiting. I saw that some people are typing, so we just need to wait for the very first question. About- sure. Um, yeah, just just go ahead and remember you can share uh, some details so that Dr. Schlarp can can help you out a bit. Of course, remember that uh, in order to provide um, you know a thorough answer, I'm sure Dr. Schlarp needs uh, a lot more information. But this is always something that uh, you know you can at least use and hopefully uh, maybe guide you a bit in the right direction as well, right? Um, okay, and let me just have a look. It seems that not not yet. Okay, I think that still people are typing, so we just need to wait for that first. Sure. <laughs> I'm so glad to be back, Caroline. Um, you know, because of the COVID issues, we we are not receiving uh, international patients. I hope that this uh, COVID mess is mm-hmm. over. Yeah. Um, yes. mm-hmm. we, we flew to Holland uh, two weeks ago still airports european airports are not collect co- correctly prepared in my opinion to receive so many you know tourists uh people are getting out of their houses like now and are traveling so um the the airports uh, fired a lot of staff um and, yeah and uh, i hope you know soon things are getting uh, will be will be organized as, as they used to True. We are all waiting for that. We, we've heard that, of course, about the uh, craziness that happens at some of the airports. So uh, definitely. <laughs> and, you know, it's uh, I'm sure uh, from your own experience as well, you've, you've seen that. So, yeah, I'm just waiting for some more questions. So, guys, if you have anything that you would like to ask, go ahead, type this in. OK. Uh, that way uh, she will be able to help you and of course in the meantime we can uh, uh, mention that there will be a consultation online not online sorry Uh, there is a meeting with the consultations that you will provide in in London is that right yep all right Uh, so the 22nd of October Mm -hmm. we will be back in London Uh, we are already signing up patients for for free consultations and this is my first no online meeting <laughs> after co- after COVID pandemic in London. Uh, I always had an amazing time uh, in, in Harley Street. We used to rent an office there. Now uh, we're renting an office in, in the spa area um, near uh, London Heathrow. Uh, so if you know if you want to have more details about this meeting uh, you can see uh, everything online in our social media where we're going to be uh, I'll be seeing patients for uh, for free on the weekend um, everybody who needs a second opinion regarding their their case um, or uh, already know that needs a support and egg donation and the waiting time in UK is too long, I'll be happy to help you. And I just put a link to uh, where you can actually register if you if you wish and 
and you can uh, even click it here uh, so you can go ahead of course you need to fill out the form but once you do you will be able to um to just schedule a meeting with uh, dr sharp face to face which is finally happening and i know yeah. that it's always better to meet face to face we are a little bit tired of uh, being um face to face online i mean it's great that we have that opportunity but i think it's always great to to be able to see each other face to face right <laughs> sure 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 if there is no questions or people are tapping in, um, you can you know, you know drop uh, email to us uh, and um, and this was this was fantastic. I'm reading. Thank you so much, Natalia. Um, uh, thank you for this uh, summary. Uh, it was fantastic to to be with you, patients. Uh, with you, Caroline, uh, and I hope we're going to repeat these patient meetings uh, all over Europe as we used to. And before nice. before those meetings, uh, I'll be talking about different topics of, of, of reflective medicine. So patients, um, yeah, uh, feel the support on our side. Definitely. We are here, uh, as you know, and of course, I'm sure that there will be more webinars right now with with you so i'm looking forward to some more i'm just waiting because there are some thank yous so if you yeah. do not have any questions then of course it's uh, it's uh, it's okay you remember that um, you can get in touch with dr sharp and her team at vista hermosa i will show this um this email address you can use as well right fertility day it's about fertility yeah. day but i think that if you wish to ask anything you can use that email and get in touch with the team i'm sure that anyone from from Vista Hermosa will be happy to, of course, help you out as well. Sure. And yeah, I'm just seeing one more thank you right here. Mm -hmm. So thanks a lot. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. We will be finishing if you have not more questions, but of course, remember that we are here. We will be back on uh, also next week. We will have uh, some more events. So I hope you will be able to join us. Thanks everyone for joining. I hope that was uh, useful for you. I do believe so. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Sharp, as always, it's great to have you back as our uh, presenter. I'm looking forward to some more events right now. And um, anything else sure. you wish to add before we finish? Uh, thank you so much. I wish you a great evening. And uh, I hope to see you in London uh, on the 22nd of October. Brilliant. We are definitely looking forward to this. And let me just add that uh, we will, uh, as I mentioned, there is another webinar on Tuesday. We will talk about day three embryos transfer. So maybe this is something that might be interesting yeah. for you. So sign up and join us. And also, once again, uh, as you already know, Vista Hermosa also uses Phenomatch and European Fertility Society is definitely proud to be supported by Phenomatch team and that will be it for today. Uh, we are in touch. Hope to see you soon. Uh, Dr. Schlarp, as always, great to have you. Have Thank a you. good and relaxing evening. You deserve it after this long day. Uh, everyone, I will. Ho I hope to see you soon, of course. Thank you. you. Have a good one. Bye, guys. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. You too. Bye-bye.